Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode here at Go Rails. In this week's episode, we're going to look at better debugging using the Ruby Debug Gem. So this is a gem that you'll need to install, uh, or you can add it to your gem file if you're working uh, with a project with a gem file. And then uh, one nice thing is that with a new Rails app, uh, if you spin it up, as I've just done here, I've spun a new Rails app called Blah. Uh, if I open this up and we go look at the gem file, uh, we will see, if we search for debug here, uh, we will see that the debug gem is added uh, to your gem file by default in Rails um, to the development and test groups, which is great. So this will allow us the ability to hop into a debug session using this gem and walk through our code and do some uh, pretty nifty things uh, to debug our applications. Okay, so I have our hackathon application over here and we're gonna uh, play around with the debug gem here and get a feel for um, some of the commands that we have uh, access to and how to use them and how they can affect how we trace through uh, our code here. So to in order to get into a debug session, we have a, a few options uh, in how to get there. So the first thing we can do, let's go down into this current or this uh, latest method here in this event class. Uh, if I just pop into the first line of this method here, one thing we can do is we can uh, type in binding dot IRB, um, perhaps you're familiar with using bonding dot IRB. Uh, and this, when we hit this breakpoint, um, we will get into an IRB session, but then once we're in that session, we can then uh, execute the debug command or any of the other commands that are in the debug gym. And that will then uh, drop us into a Ruby debug uh, console session or prompt here. So let's look at uh, this first. So I'll save this. And I'll hop over to another terminal tab here, and I'm just going to hop into the console in sandbox mode. Uh, forgive me for using an alias here. Uh, if you see up in the, uh, I know it's probably small to read, but up here you can see what RCS uh, means over here. It just runs uh, bin rails console dash s. So you get in sandbox there. It's the little shell alias I have. Uh, so anyways, in here, uh, I'm just going to type event and then call that uh, class method for latest here. If we hit enter here, we see that we hit that binding.irb breakpoint, uh, but the prompt here reflects that we're in IRB, right? So what we can do here is to, in order to get into the Ruby debug uh, prompt, we can just simply type debug, okay? If we do that, we see that our prompt changes now to rdbg. Uh, and now that indicates to us that we are in uh, Ruby debug uh, console here. So with this uh, done now, what can we do here? So one thing we can do, uh, I'm just going to clear this console out while still staying in the uh, Ruby debug console. I'm just going to clear the terminal here so we have some room to work. Um, one thing we can do is uh, use the command show underscore commands here, hit enter, and then we can see a list of all the available commands that we have uh, access to in this uh, session here. So looking through some of these commands here, uh, we have some IRB commands. Uh, we have some debugging commands, a few miscellaneous commands, some context commands, uh, and so forth. So let's start looking at uh, some of the ones that I find the most handy to know how to use. So the first thing, uh, now this is a command that's also available in IRB, but it's the where am I command. If you ever forget where you put the breakpoint and what the code around it looks like, you can type this command and it'll bring that up and show you the 10 lines around where that breakpoint is, right? So we see right here, uh, saying 13 through 22 in this file here. So it's showing 10 lines, uh, you know, plus or minus five of around where that breakpoint is, right? So that's how we can always bring back that context without having to scroll around or if we've, you know, cleared the terminal, um, we can get that context back of where we're at in this session here. So where am I is a great one to have. Uh, also, uh, another one that's nice here is the list command. Now, there's, a lot of the commands that are available in um, the Ruby debug gem have shortcuts for. Uh, so for list, you can simply type L or you can type out the full word list. And one thing you can do is you can give it um, a range of line numbers. So for example, Right now, we can only see up to from 13 to 22. If I wanted to see what 22 to say 28 looked like, uh, one thing I can do is type list or type L. I'll just type list for now and then say 22-28, okay? Now, if we hit enter here, 
now we see the lines that we've requested from this file, right? Lines 22 through 28. So the list command's great. Uh, so one of the other ones that I really like is the show source command. So we can say show source and then give it, you know, uh, a string of uh, a constant that we want to look up. It could be a constant or we can uh, uh, send it a method that we want to see, but I'll just do this event constant for now. So show source event, if we hit enter here, we can see all of the, oops, we can uh, see all of the source code for that event class right here, just simply by calling this. So we never have to leave this, uh, this console session here and go back to our actual uh, editor to recall this information. Additionally, we can look up uh, just, you know, uh, the source code for a method. So let's look at that now. Let's look up uh, if we wanted to look up, you know, what the source code for the two param method here looks like. And we didn't already have this up. Let's look at how to do that. So if we wanted to look up the two param method, we could say show source and then give it the string event. And then we can use the pound uh, because it is in uh, or hash symbol. Excuse me. Uh, we can use this symbol uh, or this to indicate that we want to look up uh, the instance method to param, right? So we'll say hash to param, close our string, hit enter, and now we see the source code for the to param method. Uh, if we wanted to look up the uh, current class method, then we could say show source and then say event, and then we could do the double colons and then uh, current right here, close our string. Now we see the source code for the current class method, right? And we're still in the Ruby debug session. We've never had to leave this console uh, and go back to our source code. We can do it all from right here. Uh, so this is cool. Uh, one of my, the, one of the other commands I really like is just the info command. If we type info right here, we can see, you know, a big list of info. This is, you know, all of the variables and instance variables and stuff that we have right now uh, within the context that we're in available. Uh, so we can then, you know, grab this, for example, we can grab uh, at generated associated methods, right? We can copy that. And like this points to an object here, what are the methods available on that object? So we can say at generated associated methods, uh, dot methods, dot sort, for example. Uh, and before I run that, I'll just clear the console, hit enter. And now we see all the methods available on that object there, right? So this is really cool. And again, uh, if you forget where you are, you're doing some experimenting, what have you, uh, remember, it's where am I? And you can see where you are currently. So now that we have our context back, let's look at uh, another command available to us, uh, the step command. So looking at the documentation here, the step command, uh, you can just say step by itself or give it a number. Um, and this, the step command um, allows you to step in uh, to the to the code, I, I kind of think about it like step into the execution points throughout the program. Um, so you can step, you know, just one step, multiple steps, uh, and get to that next, uh, as they say here, next breakable point. Um, if we do a step where we are right now, right now we're on the, this line 18 here. If we say step with no number, uh, we see that we step to the next line here, uh, but we start at the beginning of the line here. Uh, so right now, uh, this current uh, method has not been called, uh, and also you know the other half of this conditional has not been run yet either. So we're we're kind of at the beginning of this line here before anything else happens. Now, if we step again, we will see that we end up in the uh, current method now. Okay, so now we did a step. We were right here on line 19, the beginning here. We stepped into the, the um, this call here to current. So it kind of steps to that next point of execution is how I like to think about this. So now we're here, right? And so you can do things in here and play around and uh, with this code here if you wanted to. Uh, you know, you can just see like, oh, what does first.publish give me, you know, before you call this order and so forth, right? Now, what's, what's fun about this is uh, if you keep stepping uh, at a certain point, uh, at least in this case here with uh, calling these class methods here, we step again, uh, we see that we have now gone down into uh, the source code for uh, active record scoping named.rb, right? So now we're, we're inside... Uh, some real source code here that we've stepped into by uh, using debug and the step command and to kind of navigate through uh, the execution um, or breakable points, as they say, in the code here. So you can continue to walk this journey here and step and step, uh, and it'll just continue to, you know, the next breakable point to the next point, uh, so forth. If you want to, you know, 
can carry on with your program, stop stepping like this, and continue to say the next breakpoint that you have set, if it you know falls in the execution path here, or just continue your program and, and if there's no other breakpoints, just go until it's done. Uh, you can uh, type continue or cont for short, uh, but I'm just gonna do the long form here, continue. We'll hit continue, and then we see that our program goes all the way through. Uh, it grabs that uh, latest event, and we are now back at the IRB session. So we got out of the debug session, and now we're back at the IRB session. So I'm going to get out of the I, uh, IRB session here and uh, hop back into the console, actually. And let's hit our breakpoint again and look at uh, some other things. So here we are again back at our breakpoint. Uh, there's also the next command. So if we look at the documentation there for next, uh, contrast it to step where it's uh, stepping in, uh, next steps over, and it will resume the program until the next line. So let's look at uh, what happens using next here. So we're on line 18 right here. If we step to next, we see that we are on the next line. Okay, this was similar to what we did with step, right? We go to the next point right here, right? The next breakable point. Um, and we're at the beginning here. The current has not been called, nor has previous. But whereas last time when we hit step, we ended up in the current method. Let's see what happens when we hit next here. So here, we see that it stepped over, right, uh, this whole line right here. It went ahead and you know, executed this line of code and then stepped to the next line. So we didn't get down in all the gory details, if you will, of the current method and then into uh, active record, right? We stepped over that whole line, we let it do its thing, and now we're on the next line, uh, which just so happens to be for us uh, the end of this uh, method definition here. All right, so I'm gonna get out of that session and then I'm going to hop back into the cons our Rails console here. Uh, and I'm going to hit our breakpoint again by calling event.latest, okay? Uh, and now, we've been using binding.irb and then uh, getting into the Ruby debug session by calling uh, commands from the Ruby debug gem. So that's one way to get to it. If you use binding.irb and then call one of the commands from debug, it will automatically put you, run that command and put you into, you know, or put that, uh, put you into, It'll automatically put you into that debug session and run that command that you used. Uh, if you don't want to run a command and want to want to run a command and just get into the debug session, you can simply type debug, okay, and that will get you into the debug session. And if you type where am I, you'll see that you're still uh, in that same spot in the code, right? We're right here. Uh, additionally, we see uh, um, a listing of some frames here, and we'll get to frames in a second. Uh, but that's so that's how you can get into uh, the debugger through, or the Ruby debug gem through IRB or binding.irb. Alternatively, if we get out of here, uh, we have a few other options. So we can also do uh, binding.b, okay? And if we hop into our uh, console again, our Rails console, and we hit that breakpoint uh, uh, created by binding.b, we will see that we immediately get dropped into a debug session. We skip the IRB part and go straight into the debug. So this is um, a method that comes from the debug gem. This is a short form of binding.break. So you can type binding.break, the full word break here, uh, or you can just do binding.b for short. So that's one way to go straight into the debugger session and not have to do binding.irb. Uh, but if, you know, binding.irb is a tough habit to break, uh, if you have the debug gem uh, in your application, you can go ahead and still get into it uh, through binding.irb. Uh, let's look at another way to get into it real quick. So we can, we can do binding.irb, binding.b, so forth. The other thing we can do is call debugger, just like this. Okay, now if we hop back into our Rails console, and then we do event.latest, we see that we then hit the debugger here and we again are dropped straight into a debug session. So those are your ways to get into the debug gem, right? Now, uh, let's look at the break command because this one's really cool. So with the break command just by itself, um, also it's B for short, but I'll use the long form here. Uh, break by itself, if you hit enter on this, it will just return you a, a list of all the breakpoints that you have set if you have them set. We currently do it right now. However, one cool thing here 
is that you can set additional breakpoints from within this session here, right? So let's say we wanted to add a breakpoint uh, after line 22 right here, okay? So on line 23, we want to add a breakpoint. So what we can do is say break or B, and then simply 23, okay? And now you see that uh, we get this output here, uh, breakpoint line, and what file it was in, and then what line, okay? So now if we type the break command here, we'll see that same output. So we have one breakpoint now set. And now if we wanted to jump straight from where we are, uh, as long as the next breakpoint that we set is in the execution path of our program, what we can do is we can type continue, okay? And it will execute from where we are in our program currently on line 18 here where this debugger is set. And it will go through our program until we hit another breakpoint, which in our case we will because on the very next line here we call current and we set a breakpoint inside that method on line 23. So we hit continue here. We see that the code executes all the way through and it stops right there at the beginning of line 23 here in current. So that's really cool. You know, you can set additional breakpoints um, and get to them, you know, as long as they're in the execution path, you can continue on to them um, and continue to hit those and add them as needed without having to leave this session, go back to your source code, put a new breakpoint in uh, where you want to rerun everything again, hit them all and so forth. You can just stay, you know, in the same context here, not break your focus and it, uh, work through debugging something. Uh, you're also not limited to setting additional breakpoints in the current file that you're in. Uh, so let's look at that next. All right, so let's say we're uh, debugging something uh, around this method call here, this full method, right? Something's going on. We don't quite really know what. Uh, we just want to hit a debugger here and start debugging this thing, right? So let's, we'll drop a debugger there, and then let's hop into our, our Rails console here. And then we can just say team. Uh, let's just say team equals team.first to get started here. And then let's just say team.full, question mark, right? And so we hit our debugger breakpoint. We're in a debugger session right now, right? And now we want to add, uh, we see that it calls uh, this at or above capacity method on team users. Um, so uh, what we can do now is if we know, you know, we know that this is, you know, in the team users file, we don't know what line it's on. If we knew what line it was on, one thing we could do is say, and I just know over here it's on line 16. I've looked already. Um, back over here, one thing we can do is add a breakpoint to that file and that line. So we could say break, uh, and then we need to pass the path to the file. Uh, this is going to be long, so bear with me. Uh, maybe I'll fast forward here. Uh, app models team user, and then colon 16. Okay, so we've added a breakpoint to that uh, file and to that line. And now if we were to hit continue, uh, or cont for short, C-O-N-T, uh, we hit enter here, we see that our program executed onward until uh, we got to that breakpoint here that we set, right? Now, um, we probably could have used step to step through all this and get over here as well, uh, but I just wanted to show an example of how you can set breakpoints in other files. Now, one thing you can uh, do that's cool here is instead of uh, this path here and uh, passing a line number, um, you can just simply pass the class and the method um, and set a breakpoint that way. So let's look at how to do that real quick. All right, so back, uh, hopping into another Rails console session here. Let's say team uh, equals team.first again, okay? And then we'll say team.full, we'll hit that uh, debugger breakpoint. And now we want to set a breakpoint from where we are currently uh, on this method over in the team user uh, class file. So we could do that as we saw by passing, you know, the path to that file and the line number. But say we don't know the line number and we don't want to hop back over uh, to our editor, pop open that file, and um, add the breakpoint there, because if we're just going to do that, we can just, you know, we could just add the debugger while we're right there and restart this whole process over, but we, we're trying to, you know, keep our context here and not have to lose our focus on what we're doing right now. We want to stay, you know, in the groove and on track and continue on down the path of uh, trying to debug something here. So, what we can do here, if we don't know the line number, we can match against the class and a method name. So uh, this being a class method here uh, on the team user, we can simply say uh, break uh, on team user dot at or above capacity question mark. Okay, and then we can hit enter on there, and then we see 
that uh, was breakpoint method was called on a method was called, and we see that it was added to the team user file on line 16, right? And as we saw previously, that was the exact line uh, that that method is defined on. So now, if we hit continue here uh, or cont c o n t uh, for short here, if we hit enter, our program will continue on until it hits that next breakpoint. So we do that, and we see. There we are, we are at the beginning here of this method here. We're inside the, the method body at the beginning of this line. All right, so let's wrap up this video by looking at frames. Okay, so I'm back in the Rails console here. I've grabbed the first team. Uh, I'm just going to call it team.full so we can hit our uh, breakpoint again. Okay, now we're in a debugger session. So uh, what we can do, as you can see right here, um, it gives us uh, you know a showing of like the first two frames here. Uh, and then it says in 27 frames and then it says use BT uh, to for all the frames so the BT command will list out all of the frames uh, that we have access to right now so I'm gonna just clear some space here in our terminal and then let's run that BT command and let's see what we uh, get there uh, also BT is just short for uh, backtrace so as you can see here uh, we're getting some auto completion uh, so you can type out the full thing backtrace or BT to get this list here and what we see here when we run, uh, run that command is we get a list of all the frames uh, that we have right now it's essentially a stack trace here right so this is the frame that we're in where we hit our breakpoint and then this is all stuff uh, that happened before we hit that breakpoint okay so what we can do here is we can use these uh, identifiers or ID numbers at the beginning here, the, you know, pound zero, pound one, or hash one, hash two. Um, we can use these to jump straight to a frame, or we can step one by one. Uh, so the way to, if we want to just go, um, this is going to be a little odd. Uh, we're looking at this list. We would think that we want to go down here uh, but really what you want to do is uh, use the up command to go up one frame and just think about uh, whatever current frame you're on uh, up will increment it to you know the next number larger okay so if we're here and we want to go to main we can simply type the up command and now we see uh, that our current frame is main right here uh, if we type L or list right here uh, we see some source code uh, for the current frame okay now if we want to go back to the frame that we just came from we can type down so if we go down we can see that we are now back here uh, at this frame and we again we can type list to see the source code and we see uh, the source code right here for that uh, current frame now additionally uh, we can jump uh, to a particular frame so for example uh, if we want to go to this frame here, frame 12, we can type uh, either F and then uh, the identifier number, uh, which is 12 in our case, or the full command, which is frame, and then 12. Okay, and now we see that we're in frame 12, which is this IRB um, file here. And if we type L or list, we can see the source code um, for that frame here. So this is a really cool feature. It allows you to go up and down the stack trace. Um, and check out things in different uh, frame contexts. And again, once you're in a frame, uh, you can type list as I've been doing to see the source code. You can also type info uh, to see the available, um, you know, local variables, instance variables, and other things that you have uh, in the in this context available. So that's that's really cool as well. You know, info is a great one. Also, there's some um, Arguments you can pass to the info command. You can find more info about that in the readme for the debug gem. Uh, but just for example, uh, you can say info uh, locals, and it will just give you back uh, the local variables only and not all of this other stuff. Uh, one last thing, uh, if you're in the debug session and you can't remember commands or what you can do here, uh, there is a help option. You can simply type help and it will give you a list of all of the available commands uh, that you have uh, inside the debug session here with some nice little headers separating out the different sections of commands, breakpoint commands, uh, control flow commands, and so forth. And additionally, as you see here, you can just type help, get the full list, or help, and then some command, um, and get help for just that command. So as an example, we can say help, uh, maybe backtrace, right? And then we see the information for uh, all the backtrace commands. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Uh, I hope that this is uh, 
expose you to some, you know, new things that you have, new tools that you can utilize and have at your disposal to better assist you in debugging application errors. Um, also, this was, you know, kind of uh, an introductory approach uh, to this gem. There's plenty more to read about in the README. Um, a lot of powerful things here. Um, and my hope, uh, don't don't uh, quote me on this, and I, but I'm going to try. Uh, my goal is to do a follow-up video here, um, hopefully with someone from, uh, you know, one of the maintainers of this gym, uh, and see if, you know, we can pair on a video and maybe dig into some more of the advanced usage of this gym and provide that next level of debugging. So uh, we'll see what happens there. I'm going to try my best uh, to get, you know, someone from uh, the team here to to join me in a video call and dig into that stuff. But regardless, uh, definitely, you know, utilize this, uh, this gym. It's great. It's really powerful. Um, and yeah, so with that, I'll leave you here um, and happy debugging.